Can we dry the liner on 70 degrees Celsius? Let's find out. Hello, welcome to my tech fam. I believe that this is quite important video. Maybe not for you, but for film and drying companies, definitely yes. If you're not familiar, every filament will absorb moisture from the air, and this may have a negative effect on the print quality. Now, from all those filament types which we can print on these consumer printers, the nylon is the most sensitive to this, the polyamide. Now, I tested many filament dryers, and uh, most of them which I tested in this year can reach up to 70 degrees Celsius. And uh, here on my workplace, uh, on Matu University, together with my colleague Christina, we want to find out are those 70 degrees Celsius enough for drying the nylon? And if yes, how long we have to dry it? And actually, I know that it is enough because uh, theoretically we can dry the nylon even on 50 degrees Celsius because um, it absorbs moisture on the room temperature and those molecules can go in both directions, only to go outside, we need a drier environment around it. So for the good drying, we need a high temperature. With this, the molecules inside the filament will speed up and go to the surface. And then, thanks to that drier air around it, it will evaporate from the surface. Now, even between the nylons, there is a difference. For example, the PA12 is less sensitive to the moisture. PA6 is stronger, but more sensitive to moisture. So in this video, in this testing, I'm using the Polymakers PA6CF, the carbon fiber version. This is more than one year old filament and I store it in this resealable bag with some desiccant inside. And actually this storing method is quite good for me because I don't live near the ocean. And I will show you how much moisture it absorbs during the one year storing with this method. The most important apparatus in this testing will be the Care MLS. This is the electronic moisture analyzer and usually we are using it uh, for measuring the moisture inside the food because I work on the food engineering department. But I got the idea that actually you can use this to measure the moisture inside the filament. Let me explain you how it works. This is actually a very precise scale. So sensitive that even if I'm talking on blowing on it, it may record some changes. And the material we want to measure goes here. We can set the desired temperature. There are different programs, but for example, we can set the constant temperature and it will follow the weight, the mass actually, and it will show us the removed percentage of the humidity. And with this, when there will be no changes in uh, one or two minutes, it will stop and actually it will show us the remote uh, humidity in percentage. Now, there was a small problem with this method. For example, until in Apple, we have approximately 85% of the moisture. Until that, in nylon, well, less than 10%. And this means that if it doesn't record any changes in uh, one or two minutes, it will turn off, and it turns off too quickly. So we had no choice, we have to switch it to the manual mode. This means uh, one of us, well, actually mostly the Christina was next to this machine, and record the values on the screen every 10 minutes. And you will see sometimes this was quite long experiment, almost 12 hours, so big thanks to her for this work. Now it is also very important to mention that this is a scientific research here on our university and we will write a scientific article from it. This means I cannot show you all the results from this measuring, but the summary and the conclusion will be explained here. About material preparation. I already mentioned that they must fit on this tray and I have here exactly 80 mm long pieces and in one group I have exactly 50 pieces. And for more accurate cutting, I even see the printed apart, so I can cut them more precisely. But of course, uh, the weight will always be measured before and after this testing. Now, they are placed in the water exactly one week. And after this, we place them on the paper towel and left them so the water from the surface evaporates. And after one hour, they go into this machine. Now, for better statistics, and actually for my curiosity too, we repeated this drying on 120, 95, and 70 degrees Celsius. Remember, 70 degrees Celsius, that's the maximum on these uh, film dryers which we can buy nowadays. The 120 or 95, it is too much for the drying, but actually not for the nylon, but for the spool. For example, Bamboo Lab has the 70 degrees Celsius spool drying for the lower temperatures, and they have the high temperature drying 90 degrees Celsius. Polymakers on their carbon spools, well, actually, there the glue is the limitation, and according to them, we can dry them up to 100 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature resistance of the glue on those carbon spools. 
Now, I already mentioned that I cannot show you all the results from this work, but I decided to share with you our results measured on 95 degrees Celsius. And then I will explain how we got those drying times there. And I will just give you the numbers, the drying time on 120 and 70 degrees Celsius. Now, I was thinking a lot what should I include in this part because um, I don't want to scare anybody, but I cannot just give you a few numbers. So I'm a teacher, so I will give it a try. And let me know down in the comment section how understandable was this part. Let's start with some warm up. Let's say we want to record next seven days number of the subscribers and we are curious so when we have 1200 subscribers. We can place these points in the Excel graph, for example, and then we can enable the trend line and we can also enable the equation and R square and we will get something like this. And if you know the equation, we can express the X and with this uh, we can calculate, for example, for 1200 value of the Y, it will be in 10.6 days, for example. Now, what is this R square? Well, it is a number which gives us how good this line aligned to these uh, data points. This is 99.8%, very close to one or 100%. This is good and we can actually see this on this graph. What if our points uh, looks like this? Well, even here we can place this uh, equation, but as you can see, the R square is only 89%, which is quite low, but even we can feel that uh, some kind of different equation will be better on these points. Okay, net, now let's see our measured points. This is measured on the measurement on 95 degrees Celsius drying. On X axis, we have the time in minutes. On Y axis is the removed moisture in the percentage. And we can see these data points are closing to some value somewhere in infinity. And this is actually the maximum percentage of the moisture with this drying. Now the equation which fits good to these points is the 4PL function. Nothing special about this function. So uh, this is the Y, this is the X, so similar like with the linear equation. And we have here some parameters A, B, C, D, but these are just constant values. So if we find them, then we have our equation. And we can find them using the Excel. Not so simple like with the trend line, but uh, using the solver actually, it can easily be determined. And these are those numbers. And the aligned equation is so good that the R square is very, very close to one or 100%. <laughs> it will be almost suspicious in that article I mentioned, but similar R square we got with the 70 and 120 degree uh, measuring. And what is good with this equation is this D is the maximum asymptote. Uh, this is the value where the function as X approaches to positive infinity. So this is the maximal moisture. So these points will somewhere and in infinity near this line. Now let's use this equation. Actually with this yellow you can see how good uh, this equation aligned to our measure points. And from this equation if we express the x, in this case we can calculate the time for any of these points. But what point? Let's say we want to have only 1% of the moisture in our filament. Well, In this, this case the y is 8.5 in now. And uh, even using the graph we can see that uh, the minutes will be approximately 220 or something like that. But this can also be calculated using this equation if we use this as a y value here. Now, bad news is actually, according to literature, uh, we need approximately 0.2 percentage of the moisture in the filament, well, at least for the injection molding. In this case, uh, the Y is 9.3 approximately. And as you can see, uh, it's not even crossing our points because uh, that uh, point is somewhere much, much farther to the right side. And for this, actually, we need the equation. And uh, using this as a Y value here, we can see that uh, approximately 1200, actually 20.2 hours will be dry. So we, we have only 0.2 percentage of the moisture in the filament. Of course, don't forget starting from almost 10% of the moisture filament soaked in the water one week. In the practice, it's, uh, we will start drying somewhere here, so it will be a little bit better. But uh, now please sit down because I will show you the values measured on 70 and 120 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this was that 20.2 uh, hours 
95 degrees Celsius to get 0.2 percentage of the moisture. On 120 degrees Celsius, 3.2 hours, and on a 70, 326. This is more than a week. Of course, don't forget, starting from almost 10 percent of the moisture. Actually, here it is hard to present some correlation with this, but if we change this scale to the logarithmic scale, we can do this in Excel very simple. We will get something like this. And then now we can place almost a linear line here. I don't even have to bomb you with some new functions. For example, uh, if you are curious about 85 degrees Celsius uh, to get 0.2 percentage of the moisture starting from almost 10, we need approximately 50 hours. Now there is a good news, uh, because according to my experience, I couldn't find this in the literature anywhere, but uh, even 0.6 percentage of the moisture, mm, it is quite usable and the printing will be okay. How do I know this? Well, actually I measured, you know, my storing method uh, in that uh, aloe foil bag with some desiccant inside. Even on, after one year, it has less than 2 percentage of the moisture. And sometimes when I was in a hurry, I just uh, placed in the filament dryer two hours and I'm starting with the printing. And uh, actually the printing was quite usable. Sometimes I can see some uh, drier lines in the printing, you know, because only one side of the spool is dried better. But anyway, uh, in this case, we can reduce a little bit the drying time. Now drying of the those 80 millimeter filament pieces is not really equal like drying of the whole spool because loops inside the spool are partly protected from the heat. That's why it is important to use those uh, drying times and after this continue the printing from the filament dryer because then it will be unrolled and it will equally dry the top of loops of the filament. Okay, so some kind of summary. How long we have to dry the nylon on 70 degrees Celsius? Well, it depends how dry is our filament, how we store it. So it is good if it is stored in some vacuum bag with some desiccant inside and similar. And uh, if we start from, let's say, 2 percentage, and the goal is 0 0.6 percentage, as I mentioned, then using this equation, well, it is 48 hours. I know it sounds much, but uh, yes, if you want to do this, of course, uh, if you go closer to 1%, then we can dry in, mean, I don't know, 12, 24 hours. But uh, if we would have a dryer which can dry on 95 degrees Celsius, in that case, this time would reduce to 5 hours only. Summary on 70 degrees Celsius drying, because currently only this kind of dryers we have. Store the nail on in dry place, very important and dry it, well, if possible, 24 hours, and then start to print from the filament dryer. And during the drying, it is important to rotate the spool manually every maybe one or two hours. Of course, during the printing, not necessary because it will be rotated by unrolling. And also, I have a message to manufacturers. Well, it would be good to see now 80, 85 degrees Celsius filament dryers. You know, two years ago, the maximum temperature was approximately 50, 55 degrees Celsius. Now the dryers, which I tested in e this year, maybe 70 degrees Celsius. I hope next generation will reach at least 80 degrees Celsius. Now I understand that if it is they are targeting uh, nylon users, I'm not sure how many percentage of users use the nylon at all. And also drying must be equal. For example, by airflow or maybe spool rotating like we have on the Polyfamous. Also, I have a message to the nylon manufacturers. It's important to write on the spool what is the maximum drying temperature, because if we will start to getting this kind of filament dryers, it will be good to know what is the maximum drying temperature. And also use aloe-based vacuum packaging. It is much better than just regular foil. Okay, thank you for attention. I'm not really sure that we will get these stronger filament dryers dedicated for nylon drying because I saw statistics that uh, only 5% of the cedar printer owners ever tried to print with the nylon. And I have another information from the filament company. The ratio of selling nylon compared to the PLA is only between 1 or 2%. And actually those 70 degrees Celsius uh, dryers are far enough for everything else.
except the nylon. It is enough to keep the nylon dry during the printing, but to dry it completely in some reasonable time, not really. Of course, uh, our centigrade Celsius measuring has quite big uh, inaccuracy because we did the measuring only um, approximately 12 hours and we calculated something for 300 hours. So we have some quite big inaccuracy here, but even then it is quite obvious that we cannot dry the nylon in 6 or 12 hours on centigrade Celsius. And of course we have to work with the equipment we have and those centigrade Celsius dryers is better than nothing so definitely it will help but yes a bigger temperature will reduce the drying time and i'm not even sure how many of you are using the nylon at all so i'm curious maybe i should start a poll on my youtube channel and anyway i hope i could give you some useful information one more statistic uh, don't forget to click that notification bell button too because somehow in most cases uh, the notification is not sent even uh, to my subscribers I'm not sure why. I mean, I have almost 50,000 subscribers and average number of the views between two and 3,000. Anyway, thank you for watching and happy printing.